Now we need to find deflection due to shear. And as I said above, that's 1.2 FH over GA. Well, let's find our variables. F is 106.2 kips, we already know that. H is 24.5 feet, converted to inches is 294 inches. A is the area, the cross-sectional area of our shear wall again. So that is just length times thickness of wall, which comes to, again, 120 feet times 12 inches times six inches for thickness of wall. So that's length, it's thickness of wall. That spits out 8640 inches squared. And again, it's not cracked or anything, that's just the gross cross-sectional area. And now you're like, all right, but what's this G buddy right here? What's he doing? It looks scary, I don't know what's going on, never seen him before, yeesh. Uh, don't panic. G is actually your uh, shear modulus, and when we were determining uh, the equation above, we were using E, which is Young's modulus for bending, uh, but there are multiple types of uh, material moduli, if I said that right, moduli, multiple moduli. So G is your shear modulus. Some people like seeing it like E, uh, EB for like bending or EM for moment or just E as your Young's. And then I've also seen it in, as I've been doing my research, EV um, for, you know, your shear modulus, but it's also very commonly shown as just G. And the Young's modulus and your shear modulus, and actually there's another one called bulk modulus. There may be more, but those are the only three that I really paid attention to. They're interconnected with one another and they're related. Um, so you can actually determine one from another one. And that's what we're gonna do here. And we do that by taking into account uh, Poisson's ratio or Poison's ratio. I don't know how to say it. I've always called it Poisson's. I'm from the Northeast. Um, maybe we just stink at pronouncing everything, but I'm gonna call it Poisson. And that is defined with this kind of squiggly V variable. I know I'm crushing it with the variables right now, but keep going with me. At least I'm drawing them correctly, I think. And you can get this equation to convert by the following. E, your Young's modulus, is equal to 2G times parenthesis 1 plus your Poisson's ratio for concrete. Now, we have this other variable. We have Poisson's ratio. Well, what is that for concrete? Well, it can vary based on the uh, studying that I've done. High strength concrete, I've seen it said that the ratio is, or uh, Poisson's ratio is 0.1. For low strength concrete, I've seen 0.2. I've also seen that it depends on the type of loading uh, on concrete, and that can affect your, uh, what Poisson's ratio you use for concrete. So whether static loading or dynamic loading, we have a seismic event here, so that is clearly dynamic. Your ratio can range from 0.2 to 0.25, but I have commonly uh, again, seen it used in design examples to take it simply as 0.2. So we are going to use that. Now, that means we get to plug that in there. That boils down to E equals 2.4 G, or, and then if you bring that to the other side and solve in terms of G, 0.416 E equals G. So now we have everything that we need, so let's plug it all into the equation. Delta V equals the following, and all of that gets us a total drift from shear equal to 0.0029 inches. That means our total drift is equal to 0.003 inches for total story drift. And one quick side note is that you can tell when you have a shear dominated shear wall or a flexure dominated shear wall, um, at least to my understanding, you can just look at these two ratios um, between the Total. So 0.0029 over 0.003 gets you 96.6% uh, shear dominated shear wall, um, which makes sense again because it is a concrete shear wall. It's 120 feet long and it's only 24.5 feet tall. So your aspect ratio is killer. Um, it's an incredibly stiff wall, which means that um, your drift is going to be more associated with your, um, through shear rather than through bending. Um, and that is not always the case, more for like high rise construction. I've been told that bending is more so the thing that's gonna be dominated and that you worry about more often. Now we can find the total inelastic displacement 
through the following equation per the ASCE 716. And again, we know from the previous problem and we know from the problem way back, our type of construction of our vertical lateral system is special reinforced concrete shear walls, which means we have a C sub D equal to five. Our I, this is just a warehouse, so it's just 1.0. And we have found our total drift above. Um, all of that plugged in gets us equal to 0.015 inches for total inelastic displacement. We have our um, diaphragm displacement equal to 45.6 inches. And per the 716, we know that we have a flexible diaphragm if the average story drift, in this case, both lines of our shear walls are equal. They have equal amount of uh, force being distributed to them. They're equal in geometry and in all ways, shape and form. So um, the average story drift is going to be equal to the story drift that we found at the one <laughs> shear wall line. Bless me. So long as that drift is less than one half of the diaphragm midspan displacement, which is that guy right there. Um, and very clearly, if we just do 45.6 over two, that's, I mean, I, I really don't even have to, that's what, 22 point, 20, 22 point, I don't know, it's more than that, 22.8 inches, which um, is greater than your average drift of 0.015 inches. So it is very, very clearly a flexible diaphragm. And very much lastly, something that is important is I did not take a cracked uh, eye when I was calculating my uh, drift due to bending, which the, the practice problem did not do that. And I don't know if you are allotted to take an uncracked uh, section when you're calculating drift, but for me, I would think the opposite. I would think that you need to take um, a calculated cracked section, which would mean that your eye here and actually your A for that matter in your shear, both of those I think you would need to modify for the cracked section. Ultimately, you will calculate that you'll see more story drift that you'll have to accommodate because your I gets significantly smaller, which means that your drift goes up. And for a cracked uh, section for uh, concrete walls, it's somewhere I think the range is 0.35 to 0.7, and I think you're also allotted to take kind of an average of 0.5, which means that your eye gets whacked, which means that your drift, essentially, I think, doing quick math, just doubles, um, which is something important. Now, for service level conditions, like under maybe heavy or a high seismic region, um, when you're checking like just like wind loading and stuff, service level type loading, maybe that's where, you, yeah, you can say, I can use the uh, uncracked uh, section because under typical use in day to day and high wind storms and stuff, you don't want your, your walls cracking. Um, but under a massive, you know, um, max considered earthquake or, you know, design level event, when it's just shaking the crap out of your building, yeah, you're gonna see, uh, your section is going to crack and it's going to engage that bar and the building is obviously going to still uh, remain standing but you need to take into account that crack section. I'm rambling a little bit but I wanted to point that out that I think you should take a crack section whereas the example that I did here they took uncracked for both your I for bending and your A for shear. So let me know below. I, I guess I'm gonna stop this video here. I'm tired, um, but I, I think I'm learning something new. So if I'm way off, please tell me. Um, I never wanna lead anybody astray ever. You all know that. And more recently, so many of you are packing in and wanting to learn, which is really awesome. We've passed 5,000 engineers a little while ago, and now we're, we're quickly approaching 6,000. So uh, I love every single one of you here. I'm glad you're here. Let's have a conversation. Subscribe down below if you haven't. Like the video if this is something that you think is important. I think it's important. And you think there needs to be more of out there on the web in order to teach you. Uh, and until next time, I'll see everybody later. Peace.